The number seven is considered lucky for many people. For us, it marks the spot we're in the prep football season, and with only a couple of games remaining in the regular season, the time is now to take control of the race for the conference titles. We start in the Big 8 with Middleton hosting West, trying to bounce back from last week's loss to Memorial. First quarter, Cardinals pitch it to Cam Molly. Good decision. 33 yards for the touchdown. Seven zip cards. Middleton defense clamping down on the Regents. They go Henderson with the sack of Daylon Savage. Cardinals get the ball back. They march right down the field. Joe Ludwig, son of former Badgers offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig, takes it in. Middleton goes on to the 27-14 win. Meanwhile, La Follette trying to keep pace at the top of the standings. Lancers welcome Verona to Lucier Stadium. First and goal from the one-yard line. Wildcats and Carson Parks muscle through. Finds his way into the end zone. La Follette with the ball. But Verona's Sam Favor makes the interception. The Wildcats get the ball on La Follette's 45-yard line. They make one big play from five yards out. Then it's Carson Parks finding the end zone once again, completing the upset. Verona beats La Follette 21-13, Lancer's second loss of the season. A little bounce in Memorial step after the upset of Middleton last week. Spartans taking on Janesville. Craig's second quarter. Cougars trail by seven when the pass down the middle picked off by Will Jessup. His return puts the home team back in business. They take advantage as Emmett Enright lofts the pass deep down the sideline to Jake Ferguson, who hauls it in just as he did several times in that win over the Cardinals last week. That leads to this. Terrell Goodwan with the run right up the middle, untouched for the TD. Memorial by 14 at the half on the way to a 37-13 victory. If we've gotten to this point of the season and the Badger North is still up for grabs, more often than not, it means Wanakee and DeForest have yet to clash. That gets taken care of tonight. Ryan Wing joins us with highlights of our Blitz big game. Rob, that is exactly the case. The Warriors of Wanakee held a half-game lead over the Norskis atop the conference. DeForest had won the past two meetings in this rivalry, but Wanakee took eight straight from 2008 to 2012. No score early in the second. Norskis changed that. Connor True hits Bryce Duffy over the middle on third down for the 10-yard TD. Extra point, though, no good. Early third, Wanakee up 7-6. The entire drive was Javion Dane, son of Ron Dane. Carried it all 11 plays. He finishes off the 81-yard drive with the two-yard score, 132 yards for him. Norski's trailing by 11 in the fourth, facing a third and 23. But True comes through again. He finds Jacob Capstrin over the middle, breaks a tackle. He goes 38 yards, pulls them within five. Two minutes and 10 seconds to play now. Wanakee facing a third and 10. How about Tyler Mays, the diving catch? That puts this one out of reach. The Warriors win it 17-12. They get the leg up in the conference race. Our objective wasn't even to look for the score every time. We just had to run straight. So if, if that means tracking people, that means tracking people. I mean, there's nothing to it. It was my hogs completely. All I did was sit behind them, and they led me every time, every time. To the Badgers south we go now. Milton taking on Portage. Opening quarter, Red Hawks deep in Portage territory. Isaac Fillo guns it over the middle to Nick Cad for the touchdown. Red Hawks go up sevens at next possession for Milton. This time Scott Manser takes the pill off tackle. He's taken down after a solid pickup. Few plays later, Billy Plitzer finishes off this drive with the easy dive in. Red Hawks lead it 14 to nothing, and they go on to win it. How about we go to Stoughton now? Oregon comes calling. Second play of the game, the Panthers. Trent Ticker connects with Alex Duff. Duff does the rest. 78 yards for the first TD. See you later. Vikings put their first points on the board. Zachary Kirby with the field goal makes it 7-3. to three. But the Panthers answer back. Brendan Womack, he is end zone bound. My mom coming home. Second touchdown of the game. Oregon wins a shootout 41 to 33. Blake Turner knocked off Broadhead Judah tonight 44 to 43. That moves them to 3 and 2 in Rock Valley South play. That means they are virtually guaranteed a playoff berth. That's something they haven't gotten since 1992. That was a long time ago. I was very young then, Ryan. Thank you very much. In the Capital North, it now appears to be Lodi's world and everyone else is just trying to not get run over by the Blue Devils. Lake Mills charged with that task tonight. Lodi with the ball, their own 46, QB Garrett Schreiber. Throws a short 10-yard pass to Mark Nellen. That turns into a 55-yard run for the score. 
brings the Blue Devils' lead to 21 to nil. That's nothing for those of you who don't know soccer. Less than a minute and a half to go in the second quarter ball. In their own zone, quarterback Colin Moen hits his man, Ethan Allison, in the end zone, putting the L-Cats on the board for the first time, makes it 21-7. Lodi wins it 41-7. Marshall at Waterloo, just four minutes left in the third quarter. Running back Evan Meyer breaks the tie with a one-yard scramble, make it 21-14. Two minutes left in the third. Keegan Morse makes a 71-yard punt return here for the touchdown. Marshall wins a high-scoring affair, 34 to 21. Trailways Conference we go. Cambria, Friesland, and Randolph. Cambria already up 28-7 on the rocket. Hilltoppers Jonathan Pulver takes the end around near the sideline. Rumbles for 16 yards out. Watch out, cameraman. That sets up this Logan DeBoer from six yards out. 35-7 Hilltoppers. Cambria, Friesland proving they can get it done on defense. Also, Pulver comes. Off the end, untouched for the 12-yard sack. They would dominate this game, and Cambria Friesland goes on to win in a rout over Randolph.